is incredible. I, she's like this. She's like this being. She's like this creature. She's like this wonderful little being from another planet. She really is otherworldly. She's uh, she's very special, and she's she's not an obvious to me. She's not an an obvious Alice at all. She's a real interesting choice for Alice. But at the same time, she's the only choice, really. She's just perfect for it. Why was Tom Hiddleston and Mia Wasikowska the right choices? Because I think Mia has a strength that is very, very, um, very strong, but very subtle. She doesn't, she's not playing a guy. She has a very strong feminine center. And she has modernity, but an intelligence, but is not overbearing, trying to prove it. She's a, she has a quiet strength. Is on her way up with her roles. This film, Alice in Wonderland, Kids Are All Right. How is directing her? Does she have any diva moments? Yeah, are you kidding? She's like the most grounded person you could ever meet. Like, super, like about the most chill person you will ever meet on set, and and really friendly with everyone, and just sort of like, just always laughing. So yeah, no diva moments with, with Mia. <laughs> Not even on the hard days. Great. Yeah, not even when we got her hypothermia on the second day. She's a really old soul, Mia, but without being precocious. And she's got real wisdom. And she's so kind. And she's so, she's a really good, a really, really good actress. And good at navigating and intelligent uh, a way through doing Alice without her being really annoying, which she can be Alice, you know. And there's also, she's just so betwixt on that really delicate um, sort of, she's on that, the cusp of being between a woman, a child and a woman. In one minute, she looks so much like a child. And then the next, she's de was definitely a woman. So, and that's, I kn know that that was so important to Tim. What makes Mia so perfect for India? I just think Mia's such a good actress. I mean, she's a fine, fine actress. And she sits on the set and she reads Chekhov. I mean, that to me, that's a, that's a great, great actress because she's, she could be just kind of, you know, on her phone, but she's sitting there reading plays. And that's what you have to do. If you want to be great, you have to do that. You need your classical training and you need to read and you need to keep educating yourself. And as I've said, I think we're going to see Mia win her Academy Award one day. Um, Mark my words. And then, you know, uh, I think, you know, Mia is phenomenal. She's such a sort of interesting person and, and actor that I, I thought that she sort of, you know, is the, it's her movie for sure, and, and I think she, her at the helm is, 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 a, is something that really draws everybody else and brings everybody else to, up to a certain level. And Mia is... I mean, she's one of those people that if anyone can get Mia to be in their film, they do, which is because th there are so few people with her ability. She's very clever and has a an enigmatic quality that the character of Hannah needed in that Jessie's character is obsessed with her and you never quite know what she's thinking. Mm -hmm. And because the whole film's through... Uh, Simon's perspective, it's a hard part to do um, because I guess normally films are often more objective and you, you get to know what other what characters' motivations are for yourself and then you see dramatic ironies and you know that character wants this and this character wants that and they're at loggerheads and, but with films like say Taxi Driver which I love, you aren't really sure what Sybil Shepherd's character wants. You can guess, mm -hmm. but it's so through his eyes that it's a hard part. Mm -hmm. She has to make that three-dimensional, but the purpose of the story is to show what he mm -hmm. thinks more than what she thinks, I guess. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Mia, <laughs> I, I thought, wouldn't want to do it because she had done Jane Eyre and um, also Albert Nobbs and Alice. So I wasn't sure she wanted to do another period film, but when, when I heard she had read the script and liked it, I jumped out of my seat because I thought she was probably the 
one of the most talented actresses of her generation to portray this character, and uh, I'm gonna make her blush, but uh, <laughs> what I love about Mia is her, for someone who is 24, the maturity and the, the ambiguity, like you never really know what she thinks or what she feels. There is an enigma that I think Madame Bovary, the character, has. You can never completely grasp what this woman's problem is, you know. By well, I think there's a lot of similarities in them physically anyway, and in, and in their character in a lot of ways, they're very similar. So that's, that's the f first and foremost. But I've always found her incredibly, wa you know, watchable. Um, you know, th th she does suggest that someone that has a lot going on in her head, you know, and she is very intelligent. And I think that comes through in her performances, and, I, and we, that's what we wanted in this character. Um, but on, in so many ways, she was kind of exactly, always exactly the right choice. First and foremost, she's Australian, and I, you know, we, we, I wouldn't have done it without an Australian actress.